GGG just dropped a huge buff patch to Necropolis League, and it is substantially better than we could have even hoped. I'm not going to bury the lead here. I made 290 raw chaos in a single map last night, and it wasn't even min-maxed. The League mechanic is absolutely insane now. Hi, it's Lerald, and I'm going to talk about how to maximize your currency generation when using the Necropolis League mechanic in maps. But before I do, don't forget to like and subscribe. Right, so first things first, we're not going to talk about corpses at all. We're not going to talk about crafting. That has also been buffed. I'll work on that separate from this. There is one quick unrelated thing I want to talk about from the hotfix. Like, yes, there's all these changes, blah, 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 blah. I'll summarize that in a minute. But there's one line here that I really wanted to emphasize. They fixed a bug where essences of misery, envy, scorn, and dread could not be transformed into essences of horror, delirium, hysteria, or insanity with a remnant of corruption. Okay, so I spent a lot of time in a recent video playing around with essence, and I did corrupt a lot of purple essences along the way. And I thought it was the new, uh, the new notable for essences, but apparently it was just a bug. But I never got a single corrupted essence along the way, like, dozens of attempts so it is good to know that that was just bugged i thought it was an intended design but evidently not great we talked about the hotfix in a previous video i'll link to that in the description if you want to watch it but here's the tldr when it comes to mapping they made three important changes that all overlap with each other one they added new all flame members some of which are extremely rewarding and they buffed the drop rate of all embers Two, they buffed all of the devoted modifiers, which are the positive modifiers that apply to monster packs. And three, they nerfed all of the haunted modifiers, which are the downsides on monster packs. They also buffed the drop rate and value of corpses, but again, that's sort of a subject for another video. So let's start by talking about the Atlas tree that I am using, and then we'll move over to Embers and Necropolis mods and how they overlap to make you an absolutely insane amount of currency. All right, so starting with the Atlas tree here, I have picked up all of the ambush nodes, every single one of them, and I have picked up all, pretty much all of the shrine nodes. I didn't take the ones that give you the covetous shrine. Can't afford them at the moment. I may wind up working some things around to pick those up, but those seem like they're quite a bit weaker than the ones that gives you buffs and give you more shrines. So just to kind of look at the main things here in the tree, I am taking basically all of the Necropolis nodes. Now there are sort of two halves to the Necropolis mechanic. There's mapping and then there's crafting. And similarly, there's kind of two halves to the Necropolis passives. There's mapping on the left side, both the bottom and top left are more mapping oriented and the top right and bottom right are oriented toward crafting. Now I've taken some of these crafting nodes because, well, you know, I kind of want to work on that too. But if you really just wanted to emphasize all of the mapping stuff, you wouldn't mess around with any of this right side stuff really at all. That would give you more points to play around with other stuff, like like I said, probably getting those shrine notes. So let's just take a look at these. The Embers of the All Flame Drop Chance uh, wheel here on the top left then ends with this talent here, this passive here, Eternal Torment, which gives you a 50% increased chance for all haunted pack leaders in your maps to be rare. This basically just adds a ton of extra rares into your maps and it gives you a 50% chance to spawn a Tormented Spirit when you collect a corpse. Now, the corpse chance comes from the bottom right here, you know, increased chance of getting corpses from unresolved anguish monsters, and 25% chance to just get two corpses whenever you would get one. So this does add a lot of Tormented Spirits. Now, I don't really want to spawn a bunch of Tormented Spirits and then have them buff the rares and then have those rares kill me, so I've taken Speaker of the Dead, and this basically turns all the Tormented Spirits in your maps into buffs, like just buffs that you can run into. And because I'm coming over here and taking Speaker of the Dead, I basically want to take all of the other things that add a lot more juice onto Tormented Spirits, like Unrelenting Torment, giving uh, map bosses a 10% chance to be surrounded by Tormented Spirits. If you don't take Speaker of the Dead, the Dead this can turn the map boss into basically just like an uh, immortal killing machine. But when you do have this and Speaker that Dead together, it basically just turns uh, those Tormented Spirits into like a massive buff that's applied to you. You also get 30% more quantity of items possessed or dropped by possessed monsters in your maps. And since the Tormented Spirits can't possess monsters, you would say like, okay, so that part's worthless, right? Well, no, because we take Seance, which happens before the monsters have spawned in, like they spawn in, five of them are possessed. So even though you're not able to have Tormented Spirits fly into and possess monsters because of Speaker of the Dead, by having Seance, you will have five rare monsters in your maps that are possessed, period. 
You also then get 60% quantity of items dropped by those guys and all of the monsters that you are then able to go touch when you're possessed and you're running through and touching monsters. All of this means a lot more quantity of items dropped by those five rares and by any monsters that you're able to touch while you're being possessed by a tormented spirit. So really good stuff here. Not good enough, I think, to take the three points to get the one extra tormented spirit per map. Not really worth putting scarabs in, but just some very good, like low cost juice that synergizes with the Necropolis League mechanic. Now, the bottom left corner here is, I think, a lot more straightforward. You have increased Devoted Chance, and Devoted are the positive modifiers that come from the League mechanic. So you have two small passives that give 5% increased chance for Devoted modifiers, and then this big notable that gives 30% increased chance for 40% total. Now, you have two ways you could come at this. You can come around the left side, which makes the Haunted modifiers have 40% reduced effect between these two points, which is quite a substantial reduction in their impact, and the Haunted modifiers are the bad ones, so that makes this a lot easier. And I think if you're struggling at all, if you're like worried about how difficult this is, I think coming this way is the right move. You also can take Imperial Race if, if you're in the situation where I am. The right side makes it so that they have more impact and it increases the Haunted modifiers by an entire tier. This makes it all substantially more dangerous. So like if you're if you're worried about your build, if you're feeling a, you know, a little like underpowered at this point in the league, I wouldn't take Imperial Wraiths or these two small modifiers. The reason that you would want to take these is it increases the amount of corpses and embers of the all flame that the haunted monsters drop because that is sort of the positive of having haunted modifiers on monsters at all is it increases the amount of corpses and embers of the all flame so by juicing that with an extra tier on all of those and by adding 20 percent increased effect you are increasing that set of drops from those guys I haven't played around with this that much in like super juicy maps. It may be too dangerous. I may wind up backing out of this, but just playing with it and like chisel Alk and then run the map, it has worked out okay for me. I do think that the reduced haunted monster modifier effect is like very, very fine though. Very acceptable if you're struggling in the slightest. All right, now the reason that we're taking ambush and domination, and you could potentially do this with ritual as well, is this this league mechanic is all about normal map mobs like normal monsters in maps so we're talking about the guys that are in there by default just the regular you know depending on what type of monster or to what type of map you're doing that, that would determine the type of monster that would be in there we're specifically not talking about like if you do legion there will be legion monsters if you do breach there will be breach monsters abyss abyss monsters those guys don't interact with this league mechanic at all so you want league mechanics that just spawn more regular dudes. Well, those mechanics, as far as I can remember, the only ones that really come to mind are Ambush, Domination, and Ritual. I didn't add Ritual because, I mean, Ritual is fine. It basically just gives you a second chance to kill a lot of the guys in your maps, but there's kind of a high point cost associated with it. As we can see, there's a lot of wheels associated with taking Ritual, and Ambush is just a lot cheaper. It's just a lot cheaper. Now, one notable thing here I will point out is that I've taken these two small passives here in addition to like traveling up to take twice tempted to get an extra strong box, which really isn't all that strong. You're getting between scarabs and your map device, potentially 20 strong boxes per map or 25 strong boxes per map if you have a five, uh, a five slot map device unlocked. And so one extra strong box isn't that great, but you know, it's it's one point and it is an extra strong box, but getting 15% chance to have an extra pack on every single one of the strong boxes, if you're having 15, 20, 25 strong boxes in a map is pretty significant. And that is then multiplied by this node right here, secret compartments, which replaced um, replaced the old operative strong boxes, the strong boxes that used to drop a lot of scarabs, uh, all scarabs basically, or all strong boxes now, are basically operative strong boxes. They can all drop scarabs. So, this has actually been a pretty massive buff to the way that Ambush works in this league by just making them all capable of dropping scarabs. So, I do take a lot of scarab nodes, not all of them. All of these smaller ones where you kind of skew the weighting on what type of scarabs drop has not really paid off that well for me because ultimately it's not increasing the quantity of scarabs that you're getting just increasing them to sort of be more valuable but i haven't really found it to actually pay off that well these notables like singular carapaces trapping carapaces and so on 
So I've mainly just emphasized getting more scarabs, getting more valuable ones from remarkable relics, but then just like this scarab wheel that gives you a higher chance to get them from rare monsters, that's pretty good. This wheel that just gives you more scarabs, that's pretty good. This one that gives you a 25% chance to get one from the final map boss, not as good. Domination is also just a super simple one to add because it adds several packs of monsters. You know, it adds at least a couple of packs of monsters per shrine and we're getting at one to two shrines per map. And then it also gives us some buffs, which helps, which is clearing things faster. Ritual, I, again, I think ritual would work really well. I think most of the other mechanics that you would put into maps would not work as well because they wouldn't add regular monsters into the maps. You know, Harvest isn't adding regular dudes, Legion, Abyss, they're not adding regular dudes, they're adding Harvest and Legion and Abyss guys, and then those guys will not be able to interact with the Necropolis League mechanic to give you those rewards. Okay, a couple of other things I wanted to touch on. I started to talk about the chance to be openable again. You get 16% chance to be openable again for all of the strong boxes. Now this is, uh, what is the term? I think recursive? I don't know, I used to know math. I got real stupid as soon as I hit 30. I like it though. 16% uh, chance to get all of your strong boxes to open again doesn't really mean like 16% more strong boxes because they can be opened again and then again and then again. It's kind of the same uh, interaction if you ever played classic wow and you played with an enhancement shaman the way that wind fury could proc off of itself again and again that that sort of thing can happen here so if you were to take these and one of the scarab that interacts with them all right so here is the scarab that interacts with it ambush scarab of hidden compartments that pushes you up to about 31 percent chance for strong boxes to be openable multiple times not twice that's the important thing here it's not twice you have a 30 percent chance roughly to get a second opening and then a 30% chance to get another opening and then a 30% chance to get another opening. So that gives you about a 30% chance to get a second opening, a 9% chance to get a third, a 3% chance to get a fourth, 1% chance to get a fifth. So all of this adds up to be about 50% more strong boxes in your maps if you are using this Scarab. And surprisingly, this one is pretty cheap. Now, unless the price on it has gone through the moon overnight, right, no, it hasn't. It's basically one chaos a pop. Maybe if you're buying them in bulk, it'll be more like two, but that's pretty cheap. So what I've been doing for for this mechanic is I've just been throwing in a couple of ambush Scarabs and one ambush Scarab of hidden compartments, and that's pretty much been it. Now you can use some of these other ones. Ambush Scarab of Potency will give you increased explicit modifiers. So that means the quantity. That means when they'll say things like they drop five additional um, additional cartography scarabs or whatever, that would then be increased by 75%. Things usually round down. So I don't think this one is really that amazing, but it could be pretty good. Some of the more expensive ones like Ambush Scarab of Containment and of Discernment, I haven't really been playing with. I know that they are strong. I know that they're very strong. They're very expensive. I've really been trying to keep this a little bit cheaper. So I've mainly just been trying to add a lot of monsters in by using Ambush Scarabs and Ambush Scarab of Hidden Compartments just to get multiple openings on all of those strong boxes. One final note here, it's always kind of been standard for Strongbox users to take Fault of Mysteries and back up cash. This will duplicate all of the currency nodes or currency orbs that you get from strong boxes and all of the div cards that you get from strong boxes. So I've gotten, you know, a lot of patient cards already. I've gotten quite a few valuable div cards and so quite a lot of currency from strong boxes, even in just doing this for a few hours. But usually the maps from strong boxes being duplicated, that was usually something that would not be taken. It was just kind of skipped over because maps were generally seen as like a very low value uh, reward for the three point investment. That's not really the case now due to tier 17 maps and due to just the point at which we are in the league. And because cartographer strong boxes are capable of dropping scarabs, unless I'm mistaken on that, cartographer strong boxes are actually still quite valuable. They don't just drop maps. They can drop a lot of useful stuff like strong boxes or uh, scarabs so that makes them still pretty valuable and the possibility of getting two tier 17 maps out of a cartographer's strong box is very very appealing even just at this point getting like multiple tier 16 maps then the first week of a league is pretty good so i do think that this is actually a pretty valuable uh part of this wheel so i like i said i've taken every single strong box node i could I've taken most of the shrine nodes. The only one that I have skipped over is the Covetous Shrine, and I honestly might respec some things. I might drop some of these Necropolis uh, corpse nodes to take that just to have even more juice. On my Necropolis modifiers. 
Okay, now let's switch over to talking about these new All Flame Embers, and I have my Necropolis Locker here, and I want to talk about the most important one, the big one, and that is Manifested Wealth. This was added last night. This basically spawns a bunch of Chaos Orbs that roll around. They're like actual killable guys in the map, and you kill them, and I've, I've already at this point piped some footage of me killing them. They're very funny. They don't attack you at all, which is pretty, uh, pretty great. There are a lot of other pretty cool embers available though and they are all substantially more rewarding now like i think this is a chayula okay this is an Olnatal, but that's fine i put in one of the chayula versions an all flame ember of chayula and i got over a full chayula breach stone just in a regular t16 map that like i chiseled an out but i didn't vol it i didn't have eight mods or like any sort of super fancy juice on it i was just using ambush scarabs ambush on the map device chayula breach stone th or chayula ember and I got like 130 Chayula Breachstone fragments in a single map. There's a lot of good stuff to be experimented with here, for sure. Now, there are a few important things that you need to know in order to maximize the value of these All Flame Embers, and we'll just start with the first one, one the level range. So the level range on using Embers is plus or minus five. So this one is monster level 78. So 78 plus five is 83, 83 is uh, tier 16 maps, so this could be used in a tier 16 map. If it was a monster level 71 Ember, that would not be usable in a tier 16 map. You would have to go down to basically like a yellow map in order to use that. Additionally, pack size. All Flame Ember packs have a preset number of mobs in each, as, uh, in each pack. As you can see, pack size 2 to 7 monsters on this one. Uh, All Flame Ember of the Abyss, pack size 1 to 8. All Flame Ember of Olnatal, 8 to 10. As you can see from the All Flame Ember of Frogs, 16 to 21. Most packs are small. They're usually smaller than the packs that are in maps by default, but frog packs are very large. Now, everything you can do to increase your pack size will apply to these monsters, and that's why if we go back to the Atlas tree here just for a second, I have taken everything that increases other than this four-point travel uh, situation here, which I'll get once I bother to do Feared. Um, I, everything that I can do to increase effective explicit modifiers on maps, I am doing to increase the pack size on the maps. So we're taking map mod effect, map mod effect wheel, map mod effect wheel, everywhere we can, we're doing that. Everything you can do to increase pack size will apply to these all flame ember monsters. There is also potentially a green plus sign that you will see in the monster uh, in the monster window before opening a map. In fact, I have a bunch of example maps that I don't really want to run. These are like tier 12 museum maps. I don't want to do this. I just threw an alk on them just because what if, what if they have divines in there or something? But I'll just kind of show this off here. All right, so we did, unfortunately we didn't get any of them, but sometimes there will be a green plus sign here that will basically uh, indicate that the packs in that slot will have 50% increased pack size. So if you see that, Throwing an All Flame Ember onto it is a good move because that All Flame Ember will then have 50% increased pack size. Similarly, these bonuses like increased rarity of items, sometimes you can have pack size over here, those will apply to whatever type of monster is in that slot. This is the reason why we like Ambush Ritual and Domination. They don't have League specific monsters, they just spawn more of these types of monsters that then interact with these mechanics. Adding more regular monsters into your maps maximizes the value of these Necropolis modifiers. Adding more League monsters, like League mechanic monsters like Legion or Abyss or Breach or Beyond, doesn't. All right, let's go ahead and open this map, and I'm not even going to run it. I don't want to. I just want to keep opening some maps to kind of show off more of this window. So let's talk about pack density as well. We talked about pack size being super important and how all Flame Ember packs have a preset number of mobs in each pack. Now let's talk about pack density. Higher on the list, and we can even mouse over the icon here and it'll say pack density high, pack density normal, 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 low, very low. So higher on the list means more packs, more mobs in, in the map. Basically, you put more valuable stuff at the top and you put the bad stuff at the bottom. So like jeweler's orbs, that's not super valuable, but this C, here we have a 50% more pack size, 66% 6 chance to drop an additional jeweler's orb. Now, Jeweler's Orb, again, not that valuable. If this is like Chaos or Divine or Exalt, we could potentially go, okay, let's throw some frogs in there. As you can see, the pack size on this is 55 to 70 frogs per pack, and they're the most commonly occurring pack in a map. So we could potentially walk out with 
I mean, jewelers arms aren't they're that valuable and frogs have gone up in price because of this revelation, but we could potentially walk out with hundreds of jewelers orbs from this one map by doing this. Not actually a good trade, but you know, something that we could do. All right, let's just open up a couple more maps and take a look at their modifiers. I'm not super thrilled with anything in this one and that that's okay, right? Let's just open up another one here and just kind of talk about some more examples of this stuff here. You have several types of devoted mods. So oh, this is a really insane one here. Accompanied by Map Boss so it does exactly what it sounds like. Every single one of these Blackguard Soldier packs will be accompanied by a random Map Boss. I had this occur in a map yesterday. It killed me a few times, but I did manage to uh, clear the map and I got a lot of maps and a lot of rewards out of all of those Map Bosses. It was very funny. Uh, pretty wild. So you want to pay attention to the modifier tier effects that will change the tier of modifiers and potentially give you a higher reward from things. Now, a lot of these things like accompanied by map boss, it only has one tier. So lowering or raising it won't do anything. But a lot of the downsides like this one here, skills fire additional projectiles that might be capped at five. But this one, OK, here we go. Movement speed on monsters that can go up or down, depending on whether we're socketing into a, a set of monsters that has plus to modifier tier or minus to modifier tier. You also want to pay attention to minus pack size. Anything that's valuable, you do not want to put into a minus pack size. You really want to put that into plus pack size. Every single time you want to put valuable stuff into plus pack size and, you know, dangerous stuff into minus pack size. The most useful mods that you can find here, these devoted mods, the, the yellow ones, the most useful ones for making currency are the ones that make monsters drop stuff. Like alteration orbs are not super valuable, but this is a good example. Chaos orbs, exalted orbs, I guess divine orbs, that sort of thing are what you're looking for. You can do several things to maximize the value of those drops, mainly by just putting them onto the most dense packs like these guys here. But you know, if it's something really valuable, you can throw the frogs on there and try and juice that up. Most all flame embers will spawn smaller packs of dudes than de default monster types like this pack size is 7 to 21. If I throw this frost mage gemlings on there, it goes down to 7 to 12. So by adding the adding the all flame ember on there, if it's a normal all flame ember, that usually will make these ones where they drop something less rewarding. What you want to do with the all flame embers that have some sort of valuable reward is you want to add those onto the packs that have bonuses, or the, I should say the bonuses that have increased rewards from that given mob type. So we don't have any of those in this map, so we're just gonna open it up and just cycle over to another uh, map and see if we can find one. That's annoying, drop weapons are converted to chaos orbs. Kinda do wanna run that map. Don't think I'm going to though, because the modifier tier is minus one. I mean, there aren't any uh, mods here that would increase the pack size or increase the modifier tier. I think this is probably a one tier modifier anyway, but right. So what we would be looking for is something in the yellow text here that would say like increase quantity of items dropped or increase rarity of items dropped or increase pack size, or we would be looking for a green plus sign. Then we would want to take something like this all flame ember of, I mean, these guys seem kind of bad actually, but Let's say all flame ember of Ulnatal. We would want to drop that onto a set of monsters that is either increased pack size or increased quantity of drops or just some way where they juice the drops that those guys have rather than causing them to drop extra stuff like more chaos orbs or exalted orbs or divine orbs or whatever. Now, as for the haunted modifiers, some of these can be pretty nasty. So mainly what we want to do is we just kind of want to look at our build and go like, all right, I'm immune to all uh, elemental ailments, so I don't care if the, they shock me or ignite me or whatever. I can put that up closer to the top. And then the things that are terrible, like penetrating lightning resistance, well, I convert most of the physical damage I take into lightning <laughs> damage. So uh, that's really bad. I'm just going to shove that to the very bottom. The fewest number of monsters in the map that have that that awful modifier is like best for me. So I don't do any spell damage. That's fine. Those guys get everybody can suppress all the spell damage they want. I don't care. I don't do any shocking. I'm immune to it. So that sounds great, too. So we want to take the modifiers that don't affect us and make those more common and the modifiers that are really bad for us and make those less common. Pretty simple. Now, there is still a little bit more complexity to it because it's it's Path of Exile. This does mean that you will get fewer corpses and all flames from these modifiers that are more dangerous. 
by shoving them down to the bottom. So that is something to consider. But in terms of maximizing your profits per map, this is the core gameplay loop. You take the rewarding modifiers, put them up at the top. If the rewards are drops, you know, they drop chaos orbs. You want to do everything you can to increase the pack size on those mobs. This can include using the frog all flame embers to really juice the amount of monsters in each pack if the drop is valuable enough, like exalted or divine orbs. If the rewards are just like increased quantity or rarity or pack size, then you want to use the valuable embers like Chayula or Beyond Monsters to juice the amount of drops that they have. See, it sounds super complex and it definitely can be, but the underlying principle is not too bad. Put the good stuff at the top, put the bad stuff at the bottom, you're good to go. So in conclusion, I think this might be the juiciest league ever. There is so much control over the risk reward balance and it feels amazing. All right, I think that pretty much covers it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye.